Hello and welcome to the BWBC Online Weekly Bible Study Lesson. Our prayer is that something will be said to bless you and your walk with the Lord. Good morning, Ben Washington, or good afternoon, Ben Washington family. This is Pastor Sneed with our uh, last uh, Bible study for the year 2020. Uh, I am excited to be able to, to be in a position to, to teach God's Word. I'm teaching in a, in a different setting. We're not in the sanctuary. We're not in my office. We're actually in the conference room uh, where it's a little bit more comfortable. Uh, today's lesson I had actually planned on teaching uh, about three weeks ago. And I wasn't able to, uh, to teach it, so I'm very grateful that I have an opportunity to teach this lesson today. Uh, the last uh, midweek Bible study for the year 2020. And hasn't 2020 been quite a year? It's been, a, it's been in many ways a year of unexpected events, occurrences. It's been a year of, of unrest, a year of uncertainty. It's been a year of, uh, of tragedy in many ways. Uh, but through it all, God has been able to, to see us to this point. So all of us should be thankful for the opportunities that we have as we approach this end of 2020. And we pray that God will bless us to see 2021. And we do not know uh, what will unfold in 2021, but we do know who holds the future. And so with that, we have confidence. If you would join us in a word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for allowing us this opportunity uh, to share your word with your people. Thank you, Father God, for your grace that has been sufficient and has been a uh, provider for us during uh, this entire year. Thank you, Father God, for the, the mountains and the valleys that you brought us through. Father God, we, uh, we've learned to trust you and to depend even more on your word. So Lord, we pray that your word this day will be a lamp unto our feet, as well as a light unto our pathway. As you have blessed us to be able to, to make it to this point in the year 2020, we pray, Father God, that your grace will extend to uh, all of the saints uh, as we approach the year 2021. We thank you, God, for who you are and for what you've done. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, what I normally like to do at the end of the year is I like to reflect. I like to reflect on uh, what has occurred and try to reflect on the lessons that hopefully I've learned, uh, the experiences I've had, but I also start to anticipate uh, the upcoming year. And so one of the things that I like to do in preparation for a new year is I like to buy me a calendar. And so every year I, I'll buy a calendar that I can take with me and put in my briefcase. Uh, and, and so a calendar allows me to plan uh, certain things, to have it on my calendar, to have it scheduled, to know the date, the time, the, the location. And so I, I carry a calendar like this with me so that it, it, it's handy. But then when I go to the office, I like to have one that I, uh, that's convenient, that I can pull out and look at. So, so you have different types of calendars. You have a, a, a yearly calendar, you have a weekly calendar, you have a daily calendar, and you even have a desk calendar. But you also have different types of calendars. You have a, a school calendar, that tells you the beginning of the school year, the end of the school year, the days where there are student holidays, so parents can do planning, teachers can do planning. But then you also have a, a business calendar, and that business calendar uh, doesn't always start on January the 1st. Uh, that calendar is used for businesses to coordinate their activities. So you have a school calendar, you have a business calendar, you even have a fiscal calendar. That fiscal calendar is used to, uh, for the purposes of, of, of establishing a budget year. And that budget year, again, doesn't always start on January the 1st. That, that budget year 
uh, depending on the nature of the business, can start in October or could start uh, in February or even in the uh, early parts of the year. You have a sports calendar. Not all, not all sports start on the, uh, the same date, the same month. You have, a, you have a season for football. You have a season for, for basketball. You have a season for baseball. So you have sports calendars. And so a lot of families will plan their vacation times around certain events that is based on the, the sports calendar. And so you even have a religious calendar. And that religious calendar tells you about those important events that may occur uh, of a, that has to do with one's faith. Did you know that God has a calendar? And did you know that God's calendar has been established and clearly shown? And so I just want to share with you some, of the, some things that I have learned uh, in the study of God's Word as it pertains to God's calendar. God has certain things that He has placed on His calendar for things to take place. And so you and I need to have a better understanding of God's divine calendar and how God sees a calendar and how you and I need to uh, acquaint ourselves with his calendar so that we will be on time. Amen. So today, if you would take out your Bible uh, and turn with us to Genesis chapter, chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 1, we're told that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, it, so uh, time has its beginning with God. And because God was in the beginning, which means uh, when he created the heavens and the earth, he had to pre-exist or be before his creation. And so God, who created time, transcends time and stood outside of time. And so the Bible tells us that, that God uh, has a calendar, uh, and, and a calendar tells you about time, and it tells you about the beginning, and it tells you about the things in between, and it even tells you about the end of that year. So let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And when you read Genesis chapter 1 in its entirety, you will note that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. I think it's important for us to note that, first of all, the Bible, the Old Testament in particular, was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. Uh, and in order for us to have a more precise understanding of, of, of what God says, we have to sometimes go to the original language. So even though the Bible may have been translated from, from Hebrew and Greek to English, uh, there are some things that we can learn by being familiar with the uh, with the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, but also know that the Bible is written from a Jewish perspective. And so as God has dealt with humanity, uh, he has uh, allowed us to see things through the Bible which uh, oftentimes con contradict what we are accustomed to and, we, and what we are familiar with. So let me give you some scriptures that I kind of point out some things. Look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. It says, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening, and there was morning the first day. And then if you go down to Genesis 1, 8, you'll see, And there was evening, and there was morning. That was the second day. If you go down to verse 13, you'll notice, uh, and there was evening and there was morning. That was the third day. If you go to verse 19, you'll see, uh, and, God, and there was evening and there was morning. That was the fourth day. If you go to verse number 23, you'll see, and there was evening and there was morning. It was the fifth day. And you go down to verse number uh, 31, you'll see, 
where it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And then finally, you look at in chapter 2, uh, verse 2, you see, and, and on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because only God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. The point that I'm trying to make through those various verses is that most of us, when we look at a, a day, a period of 24 hours, uh, our mind normally goes to the morning and the evening. So we believe that the day starts in the morning and it ends at midnight. But the Hebrew scriptures, the Bible teaches that God views time and a day as starting in the evening and, and ending uh, that next evening. And so... Uh, I remember when I was playing football in college because of uh, uh, a young man who was very talented on our team, I discovered because of his faith, he observed the Sabbath day. He observed that, that day that God had set aside for rest. And so uh, the Sabbath day for him started on Friday evening at twilight or at sunset, and it ended at sunset on Saturday, and so he never played. He never played uh, 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 day games uh, on Saturdays. He always had to play after the sun, after that day had ended, which was after sundown, about 6 p.m. And so, what I'm trying to get you to see is that number one, God establishes time. He established a day. Uh, a 24-hour day, and in that 24-hour day, contrary to our mindset, we look at a day as beginning in the morning, uh, at 12 on one, and ending at 11:59. But God's view of a day is from from sunset to sunset, and that's what I want you to know. Uh, and and so, if you look at the first day of the week, God called the first day of the week the first day. He called the second day of the week the second day, and the third day of the week the third day. So how do we get these uh, Monday and Sunday and, 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 and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, 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 and how did that uh, fix, fix it in our minds? Well, let me tell you. When God created the creation, uh, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, that he created two lights, a greater light to rule by day and a lesser light to, to, to rule by uh, night. And, and you and I know that greater light to be the sun and we know that lesser light to be the moon and the stars. And it wasn't until Genesis chapter 15 that the word sun was even mentioned in the Bible because the early man referred to uh, it as the greater light and the lesser light. But then you'll also find out that the term moon, uh, the word moon uh, was not mentioned in the Bible until around Genesis chapter 37. So, so, so how do we get the names for uh, our days, the day one, day two, day three? I'm glad you asked. Because Satan, who is the author of confusion, and who wanted to be worshipped, infiltrated God's plan, and, and man began to worship not the creator, but the, crea but the creation. And so uh, we look at Sunday as, uh, as a day, but you know what the Sunday was? That was called the sun's day. That was the day in which men, uh, ancient men, uh, gave tribute or honor to the sun, and, and the and that and the Monday was the moon's day, and Tuesday was uh, Tuesday was day three. That was Thor's day, and uh, Wednesday was the day for uh, Mercury. Uh, Thursday was the day for Jupiter. Uh, Friday was the day for Venus, and Saturday was the day for Saturn. 
So notice that, that men began to uh, look at the planets and they attributed a, a specific day of the week to a planet and they began to worship uh, the, the creation as opposed to worshiping the creator. And so without, our, without us even thinking, we, when we set our calendar and set our day and we say, okay, I, I'm gonna be at this place on Monday, uh oh, that's, that's Moon's Day. I'm gonna be at this place on, on Tuesday. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's, that's uh, Mars Day. I'm gonna be at this place on, on, on Wednesday. That's Mercury's Day. So, so in our own vocabulary, without us being consciously aware, we are contributing to a system in which men give acknowledgement and credence and, play, and pay homage to the creation as opposed to the creator. And so, uh, what I just want you to know that God has a calendar. And, and so, when God established time and he established days, he, just, he did it in a way that would not take away from who he is. But because of Satan and his, his desire to, to ruin or sabotage the plan of God, Satan introduced idolatry into our life. Well, let's look at the Hebrew word for day. And you know, one of the interesting questions that, that when you start studying the Bible is, did God really create the world in six days? And, and how long was a day? Well, the Hebrew word for day is, is yom, and it means 24 hours. And uh, if you read St. John chapter 11, verse nine, these are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? And if anyone walks in a day, he does not stumble. So, so the Jewish people had come to look at uh, a day because of the sun and, and, and because there was a clear distinction between, between light and darkness. And so, for, for so, so in the Jewish vernacular, they had decided that a day was uh, 12 hours. And so when Jesus made that comment, are there not 12 hours in a day? I believe he was referring to light. But as we look at that, uh, that revolution uh, of a day, you and I know that, uh, that a day consists of 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. And so we look at a day as 24 hours. And I mentioned to you that a Jewish day was from sunset to sunset, or we would say from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. And so, uh, but let's look at the, um, not just uh, the term for day, but let's look at a week. You and I look at a week as what? Seven days. The Hebrew word uh, in Genesis chapter 29, verse seven, uh, that word is Sheba, which means a period of seven. And so, so how does, uh, if, you, if you look at a, a day, you look at a, a week, you look at a month, that's what calendars do. You can break it down by a period of 24 hours. You can break it down by seven days a week. Uh, you can even break it down by a month. So what was the Jewish word for month? The, the Jewish word for month was Kodesh. A Jewish calendar is actually divided into 12 months. And here's the reason why. The, Jew, uh, the Jewish calendar was not based on the solar or the sun. It was actually based on the moon, lunar. And so a Jewish calendar was based on, uh, on the moon and it was based on uh, whenever a new moon would show up. And as you and I know, as you study history, you know that, uh, that a Jewish calendar uh, consisted of 354 days, or we would like to call it a period of uh, each month was based on uh, 30 days. And, if you, and, and it's interesting 
because a Jewish person and, and people who didn't have calendars like you and I have, how do they judge time? Well, one of the first things they did was they look in the sky and if they saw the beginning of what we call, we would call it the sickle of the month, which is that quarter moon, uh, for them that was an introduction that there was a new month that was approaching. And, and for them, there had to be at least two or three witnesses to declare uh, that they saw the sickle or they saw the, uh, they saw the beginning of a new month. And so if, if, if you are familiar with that, with ancient history, you know that that society based everything on, on, on agriculture, why? Because they plant it, they harvest it, and if you know anything about a sickle, a sickle was used to be able to, to uh, garnish crops, uh, and, and, and so uh, they lived in a society where agriculture was, was one of the main staples of life and living, and so uh, they, they looked at uh, a month as, a, as a, the beginning of the, the sickle, when they saw the when they saw the, the quarter moon. But then but then you get to you get to a quarter moon, you get to a full moon, and then you and then there are times in the month why you don't even see a moon. So um, but let's look at something that I think is interesting and that is go back to Genesis chapter one and you'll see where God introduces uh, God introduces uh, time and seasons, and so let's look. Let's look here at Genesis chapter one, verse fourteen. It says, "And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years." Notice. That the that the heavenlies, the the cosmic, they were to be for for signs. They were to be for seasons. They were to be for days. They were to be for years. So it's it's interesting because uh, the Jewish word for sign, and and it's uh, if you remember, Jesus talked about how the Jews. Uh, we're looking for a sign. If you remember, uh, we just celebrated uh, the birth of Jesus. Do you remember that that uh, there were wise men who followed a star because they saw the star as a sign, and they they believed that the Messiah had been born. So they followed the the star because they. They saw it as a sign, and, and just recently, uh, something that had not occurred, uh, it had been 800 years since it had occurred, you saw where there was the, the, two, the two of our largest planets, uh, I believe it was Jupiter and, 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 and Mars, how they, they aligned themselves with the Earth, and they created this, this bright star that, uh, and some have said, was that, was that the star that the wise men had followed that, that pointed them in direction? I don't know. Someone asked me if I had seen, uh, if I'd gone outside and, and seen, I said, no, I, I'll have to see it the next time around. Well, uh, that was a joke, but I, I missed it, okay? Uh, but God wanted us to be able to look at the, the cosmic and to be able to see signs, to be able to see seasons, to be able to see days, and to be able to see years. So a sign is a signal, a token, an omen. A season is a fixed time or an appointed time. And the same word for season in Hebrew can also be translated festival. So do you not know that uh, um, when we, when we look at uh, certain days of the year, we have set aside certain days for what? 
festivals or, or days to celebrate. Uh, and so when God established uh, his festivals in Leviticus chapter 23 and Exodus chapter 12 and Deuteronomy chapter 16, uh, he established those uh, certain days uh, for the Jewish people to observe the feast of the Lord or the festivals of the Lord. And so uh, a season is that fixed time. A day is a 24 hour period and a year is an entire revolution of time. So, so how does God divide time? Well, uh, uh, the earth is used to, de to determine a day uh, on its axis. The moon is used to determine a month cycle. The sun is used to determine a year. And the stars are used to determine the season. So uh, why are you teaching me uh, about God's divine calendar? I am convinced that the season that we're in right now, that if we go back to the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, the word Genesis means beginning. And we go back to the original blueprint that God established. I believe that as we draw closer to the return of Christ, we are going to see signs. We're going to uh, get signals from the cosmic. We're going to be able to see that there's a changing of the seasons. And, and, and there, are, there are men that Peter talked about where men uh, mocked God and said, things are as they have been since the very beginning. Not realizing that God has an appointment. The, you know, have, you ever, have you ever put something on your calendar and you and you missed your appointment. You ever you ever had an appointment to the doctor, an appointment uh, to a, a business meeting, and somehow you just ignored your calendar and you missed your appointment. Well, guess what? There are some things that are appointed for each of us. The Bible teaches us it is appointed to man to die once, and after that is judgment. Do you know? that unbeknownst to you, but known to God, God has a date on his divine calendar in which you will give up your spirit and you will return back to the dust from which you come. And that's the reason why uh, you shouldn't take time for granted. You shouldn't assume that you have all the time in the world to get things right. You should, you should understand that each day is precious. You should understand that, that uh, if you're 20 years old and you die at 20, 19, uh, at, at 19 you were old. Old is determined on by how long you live. For some people, Oh, maybe they are, they're at their last days in their, in their 20s or in their 30s or in their 40s. We don't know. I heard a dear sister say uh, that, that you have a start date and you have an end date. And that little dash in between that you find on headstone, that little dash, and what you do in that little dash, which is your life, which is the time that God has allocated for you on this earth, that little dash is going to determine where you spend eternity based on the decisions that you have made. And I want to challenge everybody who's listening right now. Make some good decisions uh, as you end 2020 and make some good decisions as you are going into 2021. So, so as you are planning your calendar, have you put a, have you put time on there where I'm going to, I'm going to meet the Lord. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. Or have you somehow 
filled up your, your daily planner, your weekly planner, your monthly planner, your yearly planner with all kinds of activities. And somehow God has been squeezed out. He's been squeezed out. Well, let me uh, share with you one thing. That's all. Uh, I'm about to wrap this up. But take out your Bible and go to Romans chapter 1. I want you to see this. Because I happen to believe that Romans chapter 1 is one of the most fascinating uh, chapters to read in the entire Bible. Because it... it, it uh, talked about how the creation can forget about the creator and how the, the, the things that were created for man can actually become worshiped by man as opposed to worshiping the one who did the creating. So look at, uh, look at Romans chapter 1. And look at verse number 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal gods for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to the lust of their hearts, to impurity, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So here it is in a nutshell. For the person who says there is no God, when you look up in the sky and you see the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxy, the planets, when you see, when you see the, the, the creation, does it not stand the reason <coughs> that it took a creator to make that which was created? So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so you can just buy, God has already instilled it in your heart that you can know him, his divine attributes by that which he has created. So how is it that somehow in the span of time we have forgotten that there is a creator and instead of worshiping the one who created, we began to worship the things that the creator created. So we began to worship the planets and we began to uh, give them names, and we attach the names of the planets to the days, and we begin to, uh, to worship the sun, and we worship the moon, and we worship the stars, and we worship the, the animals that God has created, and we worship uh, 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 things like diamonds that God created, and, 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 and jewelries, and and, and precious gold. We begin to worship the, the, the created as opposed to worshiping the creator. Can I suggest that we need to get back to basics? Don't suppress the truth. Don't ignore the truth. Don't ignore the things that has created. I remember when I was in college, <coughs> and I was taking a class and it was a class that was required for graduation. 
And this, this uh, teacher, it was a science class, it was a biology class, and throughout the entire class, uh, he kept talking about evolution, evolution, evolution. And the entire time he was talking about evolution, uh, it was important for me to pass the class. And so even though I was a Christian, so even though I was a Christian, I was listening to a man who did not believe in God and who believed that, that uh, the world is existed by a big bang and by, uh, by chance. And so uh, after I had taken the test, the final exam, and whatever I was gonna make in that class to pass, it was already determined by my answers on the paper. And I was concerned about passing the class because I wanted to graduate. But well, I'll never forget the conversation I had with him after I had turned my paper in because I had heard him say all, all semester long about evolution and about, and about um, the evolutionary uh, existence. So I just asked him a question. I said, how do you believe that the world came into being? Uh, and he looked at me and I looked at him and he said, by chance. And I looked at him knowing that I had been taught the word of God, I had studied God's word, and I told him, I do not believe that the world came in, into existence by chance. I believe that there was a creator. And so when you look, uh, when you look at the stars and the moon and the cosmic, that's not by chance. Uh, when you look at the, the, uh, the laws of nature, have you ever considered the fact that there had to be someone who, who uh, made, the, who established those laws? If you study the book of Job, God asked Job some questions in, in, in chapter 38 of Job that Job, Job couldn't ask. He said, Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Where were you when I told the, told the waters to, uh, these are your boundaries, you would stay within those boundaries? Where were you when I stored up the hell? Job wasn't there, just like you and I weren't there. So uh, when you study the scriptures, you have to draw the conclusion, as I hope that you have drawn the conclusion, that there is a God who, who is worthy of praise. Now. Uh, I've talked about the planets, I've talked about the stars, I've talked about uh, signs. I want to make sure that you understand that there's, uh, I'm getting into an area of controversy. There is a difference between astronomy and astrology. Okay, so let me tell you this. You can study the stars, the, uh, the galaxy, the planets, and you can learn some things from the stars, the planets, the moon. Uh, astrology, on the other hand, is where men have used the stars, the planets, the, uh, and they have attributed uh, their signs to how they're gonna conduct their lives. You know, I was born in December, and so if I was following uh, astrology, uh, I, I, people would say, well, what's your sign? Well, I don't, I'm not into astrology, but uh, according to the uh, astrology, I'm a Sagittarius. And, and then, you have, then you have people who, who will tell you, I am the way I am because I'm a Virgo, or I'm, I am the way I am because I'm a Leo. And, and here's my point. Uh, the way you conduct your life, the way you live your life should not be based on the signs in the sky or astrology, but should be based on the word of God. So when, so when in doubt, Go to Proverbs chapter three that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, and he, and he will direct your path. 
Isn't it amazing that some people have married their spouse based on the sign of the, uh, 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 if they were a Libra or, uh, uh, or what did the astrology say as to whether or not they were compatible? Can I suggest to you that, that if you're going to marry somebody, base it on what does say the Lord, to be equally yoked, to have the same values. And so I just wanted to, uh, as we approach the beginning of 2021, on this last Bible study for the month of 2020, of the year 2020. I just want you to know God has a calendar. Somewhere in that calendar, there's a date for you. The time that you live, the time that you plan, the things that you do, please consider God and please consider uh, the things of God. And so as you are living your life in 2020, if you're living large or you're just grinding it out, as some say, uh, can I suggest to you that you make room for the Lord in 2021? Thank you for tuning in. I pray to God that you'll tune in uh, next week as we begin to go into some other areas that I believe is of interest to, to you to grow in your faith, to glow in your faith, and to also go in your faith. God bless you, Ben Washington. And to all of those who may not be members of Ben Washington, I'm going to challenge you uh, to find you a place where you can study God's word and you can grow in your faith. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the BWBC Online Bible Study Lesson. We pray that you have been blessed.